Might not be done yet, but let's see how you're doing so far. So we're going to start out here with the common rafter. Of course, we've got 38 foot span, a 412 slope. We're looking for that height, of course, on a 19 foot run. So you got 4 over 12 equals H over 19. 4 times 19 is 76, divided by 12 is 6 and 1 third, correct? So what you got for height, 6 and 1 third feet. So then our common rafter over here is the square root of 6 and 1 third squared plus 19 squared. Which gives us 20.028 feet for the common rafter. Does that look good? Yeah. So that goes right here, 20.028. Now we don't know this setback yet. That's going to be one of the next things we find. So now we are going to go and look at the main hip, longest hip rafter. Or longest jack rafter, I guess I should say. The longest jack is going to be found off of this triangle. Where we know the height is what? Six and a third, right? Still the same as the main rafter height. And the slope is now 10, 12. So from that, 10 over 12, you're exactly correct. Equals 6 and 1 third over X. Um, that ends up being 7.6 feet. So exactly 7.6 feet. Now then for the Length of that longest jack, it'll be the square root of the 7.6 squared plus the 6 and 1 third squared. The square root of 6 and 1 third squared plus 7.6 squared. We get 9.823 or 893. So this across here is 9.893. And of course, that is 19 feet, half my span. Now I can find my hip here now in two ways. I can find it using the jack side, which would be the square root of 19 squared plus 9.893 squared. Let's take a look at that. That would give us 21.421. Or I could use it, do it, do it using the main roof side using the 20.028 squared and the 7.6 squared. And I get 20.422, 20.421, or 21.421. So I get the same. That is my hip rafter. Is that what you guys came up with? How many of you made it that far? Do we get in there? Right here. Okay, next. To find the decrease, let's do the Main roof decrease. So we're going to have this triangle here, 20.028 and 7.6. What's my next triangle going to look like? It's going to be 5.6. Very good. And this we'll call X. So we have the proportion 7.6 over 5.6 is the same as 20.028 
over x. We'll cross multiply and divide here. So 5.6 times 20.028 divided by 7.6. 14.757. First we subtract, you get a decrease of 5.271. Does that look right? So that's the main roof side. On the hip roof side, Well, we have our first triangle that's 19 feet by 9.893. What's our second triangle look like? Seventeen feet. And then this is going to be Y. So we have 19 over 17 equals 9.893 over y, cross multiply and divide, 9.893 times 17 divided by 19, 8.852, you could have done 17 over 19, you could have done 19 over 9.893, all sorts of ways you could have set it up as long as you got things matched up correctly. So you get 1.041 is the decrease on the hip side. Did anybody get all of those pieces right? Okay. Sure. Yeah, keep them to three decimal places on these calculations is the safest way. Because then if you're at three decimal places, when you go to, to convert it to feet, inches, and sixteenths, you usually should be at the right sixteenth. Um, is there anybody here that doesn't think they have any shot of doing a quiz on this stuff? Why is everybody looking at Jasper? Maybe. You guys, I gave you guys that worksheet on Friday. Do you have any questions on that you want me to go over? No. I handed you three of them? Yeah, the hip rough one. Well, I t tell you what we'll do. Okay, so now today's topic, we're going to talk about stairwells. Stairs are one of those calculations that I don't think they're that bad, but I do have a lot of people that used to contact me over stair calculations and how to, how to fix stairways. So we're going to do some standard calculations. Okay, so in a stairwell, we're going to start with the basics, just a straight stairwell. So now with this, when you look at a stairwell, you have... Of course, your floor joists formed in, and you have headers on each end with joists sitting in there. Um, it'll start from one end and go down, of course, until it hits the lower level. But, of course, the top floor, the opening in the top floor here does not necessarily line up with the end of the bottom stairs. Sometimes it's a little bit past. Sometimes it's actually a little bit shorter, depending on what your lower level is and what the steepness of your stairwell is. Now, have you guys talked about stairwells at all? You know, what type of code requirements have they given you? Six foot four is minimum code for head clearance. Personally, I always tried to build them at about six foot eight. There's a reason for that. Where does that six foot four get measured from now? 
it's actually a line that connects the bull nose, right? So wherever that top edge is, down to that line, has to be six foot four, minimum. Well, that's not a real easy thing to measure there. Oops, a little bit better. So what I usually do is I usually do a minimum of six foot eight, and I just go down to the tread, and that usually should compensate. The only way it's a problem is if it's really close here, and then I'll, if I'm within a few inches of this next tread, I always go to the next tread up. The reason I do that is even at six foot four, let's say your six foot four, you know, hits like right here. That's still a couple inches below this. Well, if you got somebody who's going down those stairs and leaning forward a little bit, they can be standing here and hitting that, and their head clearance at that angle is only like six foot. And I've, I have seen it happen before. So I do, I do usually shoot a little bit higher than six foot four. What other codes have they given you for stairwells? The risers must be the same. Um, it was very common. In fact, it's, I still see it on decks all the time, which drives me nuts. They'll go to the Menards and they'll buy the standard little stair riser, you know, the stair springers, the pre-cuts. Then they'll just chop the bottom off wherever it hits the ground. So you'll be going down, you got seven inch steps. Then all of a sudden your bottom one's three inches. You ever have that hard step where you think you're going down further? And Yeah. Or or they have a big drop off and the bottom steps nine inches or something, you know. And I've seen that in houses all the time too, where it's one eighth of inch, period, yes, is your your allowable difference. So now some things to be careful of with that, by the way. That eighth of an inch is not much. If you're looking at you build your stairwell. And let's say your basement floor down here is going to be tile. Well, tile has a lot more thickness than if you're just wrapping carpet on a stairway. So that eighth of an inch could be thrown off just by what your floor coverings are. If you have a different floor covering on the stairway as compared to the surface it's coming into. So be careful with that. Or hardwood is the other one. Hardwood can be three quarters of an inch thick. You know, compare that to a carpet that usually they figure is three-eighths to a half-inch carpet. What have they given you for minimum tread width? Is that, that's your max riser height. Now, actually, that's recommended riser height. That's not really max. Um, code, I think, is anywhere from six to nine or seven to nine. Yeah, six to nine, I believe. But in order to go above seven, there's other conditions that have to be met. Tread width is usually 11 inches, but it can be anywhere from nine to 12. For your riser to be more than seven inches, your tread has to be less than 11. Now, I always try whenever possible to build mine at seven or 11 riser height 11 there's something called the magic number for stairways is 18 inches you got it your riser plus your tread should be as close as possible to 18 inches So the first thing we're going to look at is how to calculate riser height. This is often referred to in engineering terms as the unit rise for stair. So what this is, is we're going to have our upper level floor, a lower level floor,
and our stairway coming down. So the first thing we need to find in order to do our riser height is to find the total height. Total height or total rise of the stairway. Total rise of the stairway includes two things. The lower level ceiling height and of course the fourth thing. So let's say our lower level ceiling a very, is a very typical 7 foot 10 inches. Our floor thickness, we're going to put it 13 inches. 13 inches is also very typical. Um, if you're using eye joists, they're usually at 11 and 7 eighths. Um, you put 3 quarters of an inch sheeting on them, and then a finished floor is usually about another quarter inch to 3 inches. So it's very typical. So how do we find our total rise? Perfect. Now, first thing we got to do the 7 foot 10 is convert it all into inches. So 7 times 12 is 84 plus 10 is 94 inches. That's the lower level ceiling height plus the 13 inches of Floor thickness. So we got 107 inches of total rise. Any questions so far? Our next step is to find the number of risers. To do that, we have to use an estimated riser height. We are going to use seven. So we're going to take our 107 inches total height divided by that seven inch estimated rise, which is going to give us what? 15.285714. Yeah. 15.28. Now, do we want our riser height to be a little bit more than 7 or a little bit less than 7? 7 is minimum. Actually, 6 to 9. They do allow you to go down to 6. But You want to go more? So if we're going to always go more than 7... And actually, six minimum is only in a commercial application. I mean, residential, it is seven to nine. He said go more. He was right. So anyway, to go more than seven, that means we're going to round the number of rises down. So for this class you are always going to round the number of rises down. So there's going to be 15 risers. Now we need to go back and find step three, the exact riser height, or the exact unit rise. And we are going to go to the 16th of an inch. To do that, we're going to take our over total height, 107 inches. Instead of dividing by 7, though, this time we're going to divide by 15, the number of rises. And that's going to give us 7.1 something. What is it? 133, perfect. That's our unit rise, but we have to convert that. Of course, that's going to be 7 inches. How do I take that point 133 
times 16 is correct, which is going to be what? 2.16. 2 which is going to round to 2 sixteenths or 1 eighth. So 7 and 1 eighth inches is our rise. Now, we should double check this. Yes. So 7 and 1 eighth times 15. Now, it's not necessarily going to equal 107. One oh six. Well, and it's actually. I'm glad you noticed that it's an eighth short, because if we are not within an eighth, we cannot do it. Does that make sense? If we're more than an eighth of an inch away from our total rise here, then that means that either the top or bottom step is going to be more than an eighth inch different than the other ones. Yeah, we would have to go down to the thirty second in that case to make it work. We're not going to worry about that here because we are within an eighth of an inch of our total rise. So seven and one eighth inch unit rise will work. I'm gonna have you guys try one in your notes quick. See if you can find the unit rise. <laughs> if I have a floor thickness of 19 inches, 18 inch floor trusses, and lower level ceiling of 8 foot 3 inches, find the unit rise, or that riser height. Give you guys a couple minutes. So, first of all, what's our total rise? 118, well, 8 foot, 8 times 96, so 8 times 12 is 96, plus 3 is 99 inches, plus 19 inches is 118 inches. Very good. So then our estimated number of risers, we're going to take 118 divided by 7, which gives us 16.85714286 approximately. So we're going to always round down to 16 rises. So that means then our next step we find that unit rise 118 divided by 16 which is 7.375 which comes to 7 and 3 eighths. Now this one is obviously going to work out but you should always be in the habit of checking 16 rises times 7.375 unit rise and it is exactly 118. Of course, we knew that because this is exactly 7 and 3 eighths. How many had 7 and 3 eighths as your unit rise? Good deal. The other big thing to calculate Remember, the head clearance has to come right in here from that imaginary plane going from the bullnose. What we're going to do is we're going to calculate, we're going to put the head clearance exactly on top of one of the bullnoses so that we don't have to worry about um, that imaginary plane that goes through at the angle. But we need to calculate the required 
stair opening in order to give us that head clearance. So how do we get that required stair opening? Well, the first thing we need to do is find the required drop. Just like total height, we need the total required drop. Now this total required drop is not, it's, it's similar to our total height, but it, instead of being the lower level floor, we're going to use the head clearance. So this is head clearance plus floor thickness. So if we are using six foot four inches for our head clearance, let's go with a 13 inch floor thickness. Six foot four, of course, becomes 76 inches, plus 13 is 89 inches total. So we need a total drop of 89 inches. Let's say that we have a riser height here of seven and one quarter inches. We have to know the riser height in order to do the, the stair opening. Step two is going to be to find the number of risers. To find the number of risers, we are going to take this total drop divided by the riser height. So we've got that total drop of 89 inches divided by 7 and 1 quarter inches. And we get 12.2758. What that is telling us is we need 12.27, a little more than 12 risers to get that minimum head clearance. This one, unlike the other one where we always rise round down, this one we always round up. Because if we round down, we're going to get less head clearance than we want. You'd rather have more than less when it comes to head clearance. So we always round up. We're going to use 13 risers. Now, when we're looking at a stairwell, to get 13 risers, how many treads do we have to have? Well, let's just look at what I just drew out here. I have four risers. How many treads did that use up? Only three. It's always one less tread than it is rise. Because you have a rise on the top and on the bottom, there's always one more rise than there is tread. So to get 13 risers, we need one less. We need 12 treads. So the opening is going to be one less than that. So it's going to be 12 treads times, and we are going to use, unless otherwise told, 11 inches for your tread, your unit run. So that is 132 inches, which comes out to be 11 feet. So the stair opening in this case would be exactly 11 feet. Any questions? Now, by the way, I do a lot of things to cheat the stair opening. This is just kind of a side note. But I have the stairway coming down here. Let's say I calculate my stair opening has to come like right here. That's as far as it can come. Well, I will, I will do things like, you know, this is my header here for carrying all those joists going the other way. But then I'll put like a two by, depending on what that is, maybe it's two by 12 or TGIs, whatever. I'll put a two by six or something out here, then maybe a two by four out here, another couple inches. And so what I have, I can extend my floor out that far and I still have my head clearance. As long as this angle here 
is the same angle as the angle of the stairway, I can a lot of times get another eight or 10 inches of floor clearance. I have on occasion, I don't like to do it, but, and I'll share a couple of examples here in the second hour of stairways I've been called in to help correct. Do this, where you actually have just the sheeting floating out here with nothing underneath it. But then when you build your little stub wall, you can't have an open railing and do this up above. But if you're going to do a, a little knee wall, you know, like a little 38 inch wall or whatever around your stairway, what you can do is then put a header inside that wall and then screw up through the bottom of the sheeting. You have to use washers on the sheet and the screws, but you screw up through that sheeting then in the bottom of that to distribute the weight the, in the way it's being held from up above. But you still need some sort of support here because you're not allowed to float more than eight inches of floor like that. If you have more than eight inches of floor, there's a chance of getting too much weight and pulling those screws out. But you can gain significant more. I mean, think about it. If you have, you're looking here at most likely a 7 to 11 inch slope ratio. If this is a 13 inch floor thickness, you cross multiply and divide. 11 times 13 is 143 divided by 7. That's 20.42857 inches. Yeah, you're getting a good, you know, 19, 20 inches extra out of it. Of floor space. That, well, you still have the wall, but you know what I mean. So it's worth it to do some of those things to cheat. For our purposes, of course, we're just cutting it off square because it's the easiest calculation. You still need to know that distance because you're going to have to still put your main header there that ties into your side girders to, to do your flooring. The rest of that's just ladder framing. That slope? Yeah. Yes, you do have to calculate drywall thickness. That's considered part of my 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 floor thickness here that I'm running. That is has to consider the drywall and the ceiling below. Um, the other thing that that people get in, get themselves in trouble with is if they're going to drop ceiling in the basement. You've got to figure that in as that's part of the floor thickness. If that ceiling is dropped two inches below the bottom of the floor joist, which is really kind of a minimum. I mean, I've done drop ceilings that are like an inch and a quarter below below the floor joist. It's a real pain to get that done. Um, that two inches has got to be considered part of the floor thickness when you do head clearance. Otherwise, when you do that drop ceiling, you got to frame in around here so the drop ceiling is like boxed out. If you're looking at it from below, yeah, you got this little weird little box out, and then you got to have something else up there to form the ceiling. But even then, you're going to put sheetrock or something up here, so you've got to have something considered as part of that floor thickness. I have seen them where they tilt the ceiling tiles there, and it looks bad. So anyway, um, here's what I want you guys to do. If you have a floor thickness of 17 inches and a riser of 7 and 3 eighths inches, if you desire a head clearance, we're going to stick with six foot four. Always assume six four unless I tell you otherwise. Find the minimum stair opening. So go ahead and do that calculation. Find the stair opening. I'll give you a minute. So. First thing we need to find is the total drop. That total drop is going to be the six foot four, which is 76 inches and 17. Is this 93 inch total drop? What's our second step? Uh, 
You got it. 93 divided by our unit rise. Which gives us... Twelve point six one. What do we always do with that number? Round, Round it up to thirteen rises. If it's going to take thirteen rises. It takes how many treads? Twelve treads. One less. Twelve treads times. If you're not old, you always go with eleven inches. One hundred and thirty-two. Inches or 11 foot stair opening. How many of you had 11 feet? It is 11 foot 11, isn't it? Okay. So that first one should have been 11 foot 11 too, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should have been 11 foot 11 inches. We'll blame it on Jasper. Why am I getting exactly 11 feet then when I divide on 32 by 11? By 12. Now, 132 divided by 12 is exactly 11 feet. It's not 13, though. It's 12 times 11. 12 treads for 13 risers. So that's what you did. You had that extra. So it's, it's exactly 11 feet. Okay, now I'm going to have you guys try one where we put it all together now. So we're going to have lower level ceiling of 8 foot 9 inches, a floor thickness of 23 inches, I want you to find one, the riser height or the unit rise, and two, the stair opening. Assume 11 inch tread and Six foot four head clearance. So give that a shot. So for the riser height, first thing we need to find is the total height. So we're going to have the eight foot nine, which is how big? Eight times 12 is 96, plus nine is 105, plus the 23 is 128 inches. That's our total height. What do we do with that? One hundred and twenty eight divided by our estimated height of seven, which is eighteen point two eight five seven, correct? So we are going to round that to That one always rounds down, doesn't it? 18 risers. What's our third step then? Yeah, we take that 128 total rise again, and now we divide it by 18. Gives us 7.111, right? which is seven and one eighth inch. Now we should double check. It doesn't work. 
When we have more risers like that, the chances of not working is much larger. So 7.125 times 18, we get 128.25. We are a quarter inch off. What that means is we have to go to a smaller unit. 7.11, we're going to take that 7 inches. We're going to take the 0.11 times 32. So we get, what, 3.52, 30 seconds? That's not going to help either, is it? If we go to the 30 seconds, still going around to 430 seconds. Oh, is an eighth. So we got to keep going. We got to go to the 64th. This eighth inch isn't going to work, no. Three thirty seconds works. Let's try that. Seven and three thirty seconds times eighteen. That's too far off. Would have to be one hundred twenty-seven point eight seven five. It's point six eight seven five. That's too small. So we're gonna have to take it to the sixty-fourth. 0.11 times 64 is what? 7.04, I believe. 64. So 764. So let's try that. 7 and 764. Okay. 127.96. That works. Now, what I would do, I never measure out to a 64th of an inch in wood. Um, what I would probably do with that is I'd probably go back and forth between my treads. Uh, yeah, I would probably do 7 and 1 eighth, then 7 and 3 30 seconds, 7 and 1 eighth. I would alternate back and forth from one tread to the next. So that you're within, you're still only a 32nd of an inch off. By the time you get to the end, you're close enough. But that still averages out to 7 and 7 64 So 7 and 7 64 is our official size. Now we need to find the stair opening. What do we need to do for the stair opening? <laughs> we need to find our total drop, our required drop, which is six foot four inches, which is 76 inches, plus that floor thickness, which was 23, correct? Plus 23 is correct. That is 99 inches total drop. What are we going to do with that? 99 divided by 7 and 7 64 Still going to be 13.92. And we're still going to round it up to 14. So 14 rises, which means how many runs? It means 13 runs. Times 11 inches each, which is 143 inches. That is 11 feet, 11 inches for stair opening. Okay, any questions? Let's take a look at some special cases. I'm not talking about Jasper. So here's what we're looking at. We're looking at putting a stairway in a restricted space. So we only have so much space going this direction. 
Um, let's say we have 128 inches or 10 feet, eight inches going that direction to fit our stairway in. So we're gonna have to hit a landing and turn. This would be you know, the outer wall, foundation wall. So obviously we can't go past that. So our question is, does our, can our stair opening just be here? Or how far do we have to go this way with our stair opening? to get our head clearance. Now, first thing I'm gonna say is, a couple notes about the landing. What is the minimum size landing? Minimum landing is 36 by 36. But, I never do a landing. Minimum, um, minimum width for a, for a stairwell is, no, they actually, they've got it, They've, usually it's three foot, it has to be, but that's inside sheet rod, that's total clearance. That's, you know, small square. So most, most places actually design three foot six from center of stud wall to center of stud wall in your stairwell. So that gives you, you're gonna have about four and a half inches of wall thickness. That gives you about 37 and a half inches inside of the sheet rock. I always shoot for more than that. I always try to do 40 inches inside the sheetrock. So I usually shoot for 44 inches center of, of stud wall to center of stud wall. And the reason I do that is if you put up a hand railing, that does come out of your stair clearance. So if you put, you know, a hand railing is three and a half or four inches. If you're 40 inches that you have four inches to put up a hand railing and you're still, still fine. Yeah. So, and actually now there are a lot of requirements on requiring handrails, even residential stairs now. Yes. Yep. Oh, the winder. And there's a lot of requirements on a winder. It must be at least 12 in, or must be at least Minimum of three inches on the narrow end, 12 inches from the narrow end, it has to be at least nine inches or something like that. It's, I can't remember, it's either nine or seven. They are a pain. And to be honest, for most, for most winders, unless you're going to do a cutout in the corner, you usually only gain like one, one rise out of it, one tread. That's all they needed. Yeah. So anyway, um, and if you to do in order to do two, you've got to actually have a cutout in the corner. You can't just have a square one. So then your winder looks more like that instead of coming right to the corner. But anyway, and those wedges have to be identical to, be, to count. So anyway, we're gonna go with a forty inch by forty inch landing. So what that means is above our and let's do this. Let's say we have a seven foot, 10 inch lower level and a 15 inch floor thickness. So that's accounting for our total rise here. So above our landing, we have the 128 minus 40 inches. There's 88 inches up there. That's from here to here. We're gonna come back to that. Let's find our riser height. So we have our total rise, 710 is 94 inches, correct? Plus 15 is 109 inches. We're gonna take that and divide by seven, which is gonna be 15.5714286 about. So of course, we're going to round that to 15 rises. We divide the 109 by 15. We get 7.267. So to our nearest 16th, 
That's seven and what's point two six seven or point two six 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 times sixteen. So that's four sixteenths or one quarter inch. Double check that. Seven and a quarter times fifteen. For a quarter inch. So that's too small. So let's try. Now that was to a sixteenth of an inch, which means we're gonna have to go up by a thirty second. So let's try seven and five thirty seconds and see what happens. Not five thirty seconds, but nine thirty seconds, right? That's still well, that's too large on the other end, isn't it? We're having some really weird ones here. So this is going to end up being, what, 7 and 17 64ths? Yes. And that's going to be close enough. So 7 and 17 64ths is what we have to have. So what that means now, now we have to go back and figure out what our drop is going to be above the landing. So I'm going to draw it out like this. Here's where our stairs begin. Here's our landing. And of course, we've got stairs coming this way. We said we had a total of 88 inches from here to here. I did that intentionally. 88 inches is 8 treads. How did I get 8 treads? Yes, 88 divided by 11 gives us 8 treads. How many rises is that then? 9 risers. You always get one extra riser. Times my 7 and 17 64ths. So... 7 and 17 64 times 9, I get 65.39 inches. So from top of the landing to top of the floor is 65.39. Well, let's subtract the 65. And since we're going to the 64th, let's stick to the 64th. That's 25 64 Obviously, you're going to have to do some fudging on your tape measure because cutting to the 64th of an inch is, well, not likely possible. So now, how much do we have left to go from that tread down or from that, that platform down from our landing? You got it. So we subtract that, and that is 43 and, is that 39 64ths? That's what we have left to go down to the floor. So how many, we'll divide that by our 7 and 17 64ths. So 43 and 39 64 divided by 7 and 17 64. We get 6. So we have 6 more rises. 5 runs. 5 treads below the landing. Now, let's take a peek at where our ceiling is going to have to get cut off. Stair opening. We need a total height. What was our floor thickness here again? Was it 23? This one was, where did it go? 15 inches was my, my floor thickness. So I have to have my 15 inches plus my 76 inch head clearance. 
That is 91 inches total. I have already achieved 65 and 25 60 fourths above the right the landing. So I subtract 65 and 25 60 fourths from that. And that gives me 26 and 39 60 fourths of an inch. So I need 26 and 39 60 fourths inches below the landing. It is. You're going to have an L-shaped opening. So what we're trying to figure out now is how far in this direction from the landing do we have to go? Well, we have to get 26 and 39 64 inches of drop. So we're going to divide that by our 7 and 17 64. So 26 and 20 sorry 39 64 divided by 7 and 17 64 I get 3.6 of course that's going to round up always to 4 risers to get 4 risers I need 3 treads times 11 inches it's going to be 33 inches this way. So your overall dimensions here. This one was given as 128 inches. This is going to be 88 inches. This is going to be the 33 inches. This is going to be 73 inches. Because you got 40 by 40, remember we said was the landing. Oh, or put a support wall right here. It's almost impossible to do this one without a support wall there. This here? Because we had the 109 as our total drop, or is it the total uh, floor clear, you know, head from the bottom of the floor to the top of the next floor? So you subtracted that 65 that we already had from that first floor down to the landing. Let's look at another fun example. What's that? I'm sure you guys have all seen stairways that look like this. They have the big landing and it doubles back on itself. Well, most of the time when they do these, they want this to be straight across here, right? If you're going to cheat on these, the way to cheat is you have one, if you, you need one more tread on one of them or the other, you put the extra tread on bottom. And then what you do is you, you frame this across here. And just when you build your steps, instead of having your steps, your stringer start here, you can put your stringer up top so that you end up getting a little extra floor space here on top. That's where you cheat if you have to cheat on these. But we're gonna try to do this perfectly so that this is straight across here. So what that means is however many treads we have here, we have to have the same number of treads here, which means we need an odd number of treads total. Why am I saying an odd number of treads total if I have two numbers that are the same? Because the landing counts as a, is a, not a tread, an odd number of, yeah, tread. The landing is just another tread. It's just a big tread, but it is just another tread. So we need an odd number of treads, so we need an even number of rises. So let's take a look at this, and let's say that we have, Let's say we're using 16 inch joists. Let's say we have a 17 inch floor thickness. That's adding for uh, subfloor and, and finished flooring. And we're gonna do seven foot 11 inch ceiling height. So our total rise or total height is 711 is 95 inches. 
plus 17 is 112 inches, correct? We divide by 7 and we get 16 rises, exactly. That worked out nice. Now, if that had not worked out exactly, let's say that came out to be 16.2 or 15.9, we would want to round it to 16 anyway because that's an even number and we need an even number of rises. Make sense? Is that 17? If it were at 17, then you'd have to decide. You'd probably go down to 16 so that you could make it a little bit more than 7. But you have to get it to an even number here. And this is where you do that. What's that? Up to a 9-inch riser, but you've got to reduce your tread to do that. To get a 9-inch riser, you've got to have your tread down to 9 or 9.5 nine inches, which is very uncomfortable to go down. That almost worked out too easily. So anyway, if you have 40 inches here, if you have 16 rises, how many treads are you going to have? Fifteen treads. So how many treads how, how big is this distance going to be here? How many treads? Remember, this is one tread, and you're going to have seven and seven. Make 15. So this is 7 treads times 11 inches. We 77 inches plus your 40 inch landing. So 117 inches from here to here. Which isn't bad. Anytime you can fit a stairwell into less than 10 feet, that's not a bad. Well, that's the one big drawback of those stairwells. Um, you're going to stand it on end and drop it down the hole. Yeah. It's not, I, I have moved stuff up. I have moved stuff up stairwells like that. And it is not fun. Um, I've, I've actually, there was a house in new Auburn that I worked on. Their only access to upstairs was a spiral staircase, which is very, very far out of code, but it was a homeowner had done it themselves. There was one of those with the big, that had a storage attic that they converted it. Well, I mean, they, they had two bedrooms up there at work, but you can imagine coming down a spiral staircase in the middle of the night to use the bathroom because there were no bathrooms upstairs. And trying to move. No, it was just outside of town. It was out on M. And of course, trying to move any furniture in and out of the upstairs, you were going, they literally had to go through a window. Okay, hold on, guys. You're not done yet.